Today's guests are Robert Gallant and Marshall Button, both of the Hubcap Comedy Festival fame. It's in its 18th year now. Happens in Moncton, happens in February. The roster that they speak about is very impressive. It's huge, in fact. Logistics, phenomenal. And at some point, maybe we should wake up to the economic driver it also represents. Because the business of being funny could be a growing business for New Brunswick. In the meantime, we can ask the question, where is New Brunswick's funny bone? Is it Moncton? Some say Miramichi. Who knows, maybe you know where it is. Or maybe you have a really good joke about New Brunswick you'd like to post on our Facebook page. Either way, enjoy the conversation with Marshall and Robert. So thanks for doing this. Appreciate you're really busy, to you. No problem. Yeah, we're in the last two week stretch, so things get uh, things get busier and busier. But that's that's good problems to have. Yeah. So. so you've got what sixteen artists in one language and twelve in another language. Like yeah. Yeah, there's a total of thirty artists coming this year. It's our, actually our, our biggest roster of comedians coming in. Um, that we've ever had so yeah it's uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun but we had some new venues added this year so a couple of extra shows so we needed to get some extra bodies in to good to fill it out so good yes well um, a big thing is uh, the geographical uh, reach of this uh, when we started uh, we were kind of an offspring of what was down, downtown Moncton uh, Centreville Inc and it was myself and my friend Ken Kelly, who was the executive director of Downtown Moncton at the time. Uh, I thought well, we should have something for the winter. You know, at the time there was a major uh, festival in the fall. The wine festival was just about getting started, and there was a big music thing happening at at one time. And uh, but what's happened, of course, we still our center. We're we're talking now from the center of Downtown uh, Moncton, and within striking distance of this. Of this house we're in, um, there are probably uh, within a five-minute walk, I'd say five or six, six different venues. Venues. So downtown Moncton is a center, but gosh, we've we're up at a place called the Igloo, and it's not quite in uh, the North Pole, but uh, we we have uh, now Shediac this year. We moved there, so we have venues in all three of the uh, municipalities that make up Greater Moncton. Uh, Dieppe, uh, Riverview, and Moncton. So uh, we're spread all over, you know, just kind of like a bad flu. <laughs> right time of year to have a bad, bad flu. Yeah. No, so yeah, I mean, with the different venues, it's great because a lot of people, there's a lot of people that love coming to downtown, but by having these neighborhood pubs involved, it's some people that just want to, you know, stay in their neck of the woods or it's a cheaper cab ride or that kind of thing. So yep. it's, it's worked out well having these satellites Yep. Uh, in our, in the different communities, and, but downtown, of course, always remains the hub. We do our the big shows at the Capitol Theater, and then with some of the downtown venues. It's one of my favorite complaints I've gotten over the years was somebody who was in trying to get into shows downtown, and they called me up all frustrated, like I've been to three bars and I couldn't get into any of them. What kind of <laughs> festival are you running? I'm like, oh well, apparently a popular one because you can't get into any of the shows. So, so yeah. that's great, and we worked on people buy earlier and earlier every year because they know. If you don't get out early and get your tickets, it's it's hard to get a seat, which is a, again good first world problems to have for yeah. a festival. So. Yeah. It, yeah, it must be striking for you to because you're giving us today's version, so it must be striking to see the growth rate and and it's for humor and it's in February and you would think it's fighting um, not all the obstacles, but it's you created something that didn't exist before, sort of not against all odds, but it, it's atypical, you know. Well, what's what's interesting is the first few years of the festival, we would not struggle, but it wasn't as easy to fill a roster, even though we didn't have as many shows, uh, because the scene wasn't as big. So as I mean, it was not it's not due to our festival, but the number of people who are getting into the business, who are trying their hand at stand up, an example being one thing that's been consistent from year one is the contest so uh, first it was just english and now we have both contest both on the francophone anglophone side and same sort of thing you'd have three or four people that someone told them they were funny in the <laughs> lunchroom at work or some people were you know kicking the tires of it so to speak yeah. but to get 10 people would have been a struggle 
and uh, we, we, you know, even though we, we limit it to 10 participants, we have to now narrow down from what this year? We are record-breaking 34 on the English side entries to get into the contest. <laughs> but it's really come from, like you said, people who are just trying it out to now people that are coming into our open mic are, they've been trying it out for a couple of years now in St. John, in Fredericton, in Moncton, all around the Maritimes. And they're coming here because this can really put them on the map. It's getting yeah. them recognized. We have probably four or five people who've won in past years who are now doing it professionally. Okay. So they've really taken it serious. It's not just, you know, the bragging rights of, you know, I'm the funniest guy at the kitchen table. It's, <laughs> no, no, they're, this is a stepping stone for them and it's really made an impact on where their career can go because they have this credential behind them. Yeah, right? yeah I mean, it was like uh, Julian Dion, who was, I just saw was uh, performing in Fredericton on uh, some pub on the north side or whatever. I saw a poster at Irving the other yeah. day when I was coming back. He's a former winner. He lives in New York. Or, I don't he's, in, he's in uh, Gatineau now. But yeah, he, he, he lived in New York, New York City, City for a while. while doing comedy there, and now they're in the Ottawa area. Yeah. And uh, then Peter White's another Peter one. Peter White's somebody who's really come along. Like this past year with his set that he did at the, Hall or, sorry, the Winnipeg Comedy Festival, which is televised, that became CBC, um, the network, it became their number two video of the entire year. Wow. Like millions of hits yeah. on his on his set. So like that that alone <laughs> has brought him up to another level of exposure. And yeah, and he started out entering our contest, you know, yeah. uh, 20 years, I don't know, 15 years yeah, ago. <laughs> yeah, close to 15 years. So Well, well the next step then will be an entrepreneurship program or an apprenticeship program right. with NBCC about uh, coming to New Brunswick and develop a career in comedy. <laughs> well, it's, you know, we have a few people now where... Uh, I'm thinking, I mean, I mean, this is on the stand-up side, but of course, uh, James Mullinger, who's going to be part of our festival this year, who the first, after, just after he moved to New Brunswick, you know, we brought him right into our festival and he was part of the first Sim Funny show and did some stand-up uh, around uh, venues. But then we have Nikki Payne, who, you know, is originally from Nova Scotia, who's known around the world, but she lives in Grand Berrichois, just half an hour away. So interesting things have happened uh, in the fall, she had the idea of, of trying to um, to do uh, this project to uh, mentor and uh, encourage uh, women to do stand-up. And so she did for eight women, and it was a great success. Uh, the show that we had at the Empress Theatre, we just couldn't squeeze any more people in. And yeah, their graduation when Marshall and I were running around putting out extra chairs, and yeah, we had like 200 people at least in there yeah. to come out and support these women who had just done the course, and they, they really, should, they worked hard, and it was a great show. Yeah, and, so... And at least half of them are in the contest I wondered year. about so, that, yeah, yeah. So we got a good turnout from them coming out and, and uh, giving you a shot to take it further to that next level so. yeah so uh and who knows you know where that'll lead and now of course nikki's doing another program open to both men and women so uh yeah. so um and and uh wearing all the hats that i do you know the <laughs> the name hubcap well the hub used to be the the nickname for moncton and cap being the capital theater and so we adopted the hubcap the actual car hubcap as the yep. as the name or the the, the symbol of the it mascot. yeah, yeah. But um, where we have a, our theater academy, where we offer courses for, P yes, uh, young students, but also adults, you know, we were able to partner the two organizations and use our, our um, network and our marketing and, and run it through so we could use the venue of the Capitol to run that program. And great. it's a great profile for the, for the Capitol as well as our festival. Okay. So listening to the legacy of the development of new comedians, maybe we'll do a, a customized license plate one day. It'll say laugh in this place instead of be in this place. There you go. <laughs> Take over the province. <laughs> um, but I mean, one of the things too is you're saying like the development of being able to attract people to the festival. I remember I, I came on in year three and, um, and of course coming from a social work and a policing background, like really not... <laughs> Yeah. But, I, but I had run a lot of stuff when I was working at the YMCA, so I'd been, you know, running events, but not, not cultural, whatever. But yep. So that just finding, okay, how do we find the comedians and reaching out and at that point is using a lot of middle people. So it was like taking extra steps and, and it was really just like, would you please come to our festival? Like <laughs> trying to find people at that stage and, yep. and, and getting it together. And now to the point where, you know, we got to select, you know, 15 to 20 English comics, for example, but I have 80 plus applications that want to come here every year because everybody's fired in. Yeah. You know, it's, we've developed a name. We treat people like gold when they're here, like that whole maritime hospitality thing. And, yeah. and the audiences are so warm here too. It's, 
Yeah. I've been in clubs sometimes in the bigger cities, and you always have that guy, arms folded, like, yeah. make me laugh. <laughs> and, and Test, just, testing, yeah. Yeah, so the guy's whole thing is like, can I make that one guy laugh? <laughs> but <clears throat> here, honestly, people are laughing when they come in the door. Like, it's February. They're just happy to be out yeah. and that these people came here too. <laughs> to, so it's, it's a much warmer audience and a really good time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and an interesting development that you know we now we are now we've become the agency, right? We yes, we are, are uh, an organization that has a number of uh, comedians that we can recommend and uh, book, you know, for events and organizations and uh, you know clubs. Uh, but the other interesting thing about New Brunswick, uh, even though the audiences are great, the population isn't. So when we do things like, uh, for example, we do a for the first 10 years of the of the festival the the genesis of it we used to do these two reviews we started with the english and then there was the acadian review and each of them would play during the festival that was a big part of it but then they would tour all over the province because they had to like if you wanted to do more than one or two shows yeah uh you really you know kind of had to spread it around and so that as a result of that the brand got around to places like Dalhousie, St. John, uh, uh, Grand Falls, uh, you know, Woodstock, uh, uh, Bristol. Yeah. <clears throat> and so now people will make this the destination, even though we're not, you know, we do other tours. We've done, you know, at least one tour a year, I believe every year of the festival. But um, we, um, you know, we're getting it around the whole province so that the province is now aware of this. Uh, They'll come to Munkin for the show, so we're getting yeah. a good... And I mean, everybody from up north pretty much has family in town, so yeah. yes, it does pick up the hotel industry as well too, but a lot of it, you can't really track that way because it's they're coming from, especially on some of the big francophone shows, they're all coming from the peninsula, coming down and they're staying with family and, yep. and going to the shows. So we track that by looking at where the ticket sales are coming from. But it's been really interesting that it is turning into a bigger and bigger tourist attraction yeah. in the middle of winter. But Monk can also, in, so you're going to watch shows and go shopping, right? So well, no, the, the real reason they're coming is because their family have electricity. Yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> and they're coming to get warm up and be able to cook things. Exactly. That was the case last year. Oh, my God. What yeah. Schmazel there. That was a tough year for yeah. the peninsula. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, your story parallels Walter Learning's interview on the early days of TNB uh -huh. and how he had to travel around and travel around and, and get uh, for a number of people in seats. So you got to go to those venues mm -hmm. to play so they get to know who you are. And so that's uh, maybe that's one of those development stories that could be boosted into other sectors. That well, it's if, very it's you know, it really is the only province. I mean, you know, the only province that is like that, because even sh even PEI which the whole province has the population of Greater Moncton. Yeah. But for the months that the entertainment scene is active, the population quadruples or you know, because of all the tourists yeah. and, and all the tours coming. So they can run something like Anne of Green Gables or Mamma Mia the next big it. musical, yeah. you know, yeah. all you know, for three or four months and draw on that. But you know, in, ha in Nova Scotia, you have Halifax, uh, even Newfoundland, like St. John's is big enough. It's that much bigger than, and really, even though the Moncton now is the biggest city, it's interesting because of the English-French split, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty tricky to be able to have a show that you could hope to present more than one or two nights and draw a crowd. Now, we managed to do that with uh, the musicals that we're now doing, but uh, it wouldn't happen if you didn't have francophones coming to an English show. And that happens a lot with us too. It's, yeah. a, it's interesting. And I think even with your musicals, a lot of it is tourist travel. Like people are coming in. It's the big musical production in the province, really. So yeah, yeah. you've got St. John and Fredericton coming down. And a little bit, yeah. And that kind of thing. It, it, yeah, it's always that thing. Like I remember you telling stories about being in Ontario and, oh yeah, we did the same show like seven nights in a row. Yeah. That's really hard to pull off in Moncton just because, you know, yep. population, et cetera. Yeah. So it's, it's, and that's, that's the whole thing. Why it really is, you take the whole population of the province is equivalent to Hamilton, Ontario. And once again, so 35% are French speaking. But of that, like when we get some of these Quebecois stars, there's ma there are many local people who don't understand what the heck they're saying any more than an, a total <laughs> Anglophone, you know, non-French non person would yeah. because of the speed, yeah. the dialect, 
Uh, so there is that combination of people from outside, the people from Montreal who have a certain Quebecois flair, and the homegrown Acadian talent that everyone understands. You know, even potentially some English-speaking people. So yeah. it's um, it's yeah. yeah. But we're fortunate. I mean, we've grown this. It started, like you said, with just a few shows. So we didn't become yeah. a thirty-show event over the week, like from those days it was like a few bar shows and one or two theater shows like we yeah. really have grown this but the crowds i mean the, the supporters have followed like they've really they've made it the success that it is that we can add just a little bit change a couple things here and there but you know from the early days of like say there was 10 shows to now the fact we're doing 30 shows it's you know that's been an interesting road to how yeah. we get there yeah. and how we brought the fans along do you think that comedy has something to do with that Oh, yeah. Because it's your product, but comedy is special. It's kind of like music, you know. Comedy brings something out in people, and it unites people. Well, in the fact, I mean, it's one thing I learned from Marshall right away. Like as, as we started with the talent agency, and but who we're bringing in was we've always been very careful about quality. Hmm. That's what he always from the first time I started. He's like, it's all about we have to bring in the best of the best. So like we're at, it's an all headliner festival kind of thing. Like the people you're seeing are tried and true, and they're mm -hmm. they're selling across the country. They're working all the clubs. That kind of thing. So there's, there's that quality side. So some people are buying to go to a bar show. They don't necessarily, it's kind of the curse of being a Canadian entertainer. Yeah. They'll recognize the face, but they don't necessarily know the name. But they've gotten to the point that they trust that Hubcat's bringing in top quality. So there, there's yeah. that part of those of people that are buying. And the other, like you said, just the fact that it's comedy, but they get to see so many different people. Yeah. It's not the same three people all weekend. You know, they've got a huge selection and people yeah. buy multiple shows and they're planning out, how do I get to see everybody? I'm going to go to that bar, then I'm yeah. going to go to that bar. then yeah. you know. So they're going out three nights out of the week to see our shows, it, which is a you know, big commitment. Yeah, and the, the other interesting thing about New Brunswick is you, know, you hear about, oh, it's all old people, we have an aging population. <laughs> That's true to a large extent. Yeah. Um, and working as I do, you know, doing the same friggin' show for 30-some years, <laughs> and also being involved at the Capitol, where we have a lot of shows, where there's nice seats and... You know, you'll look into a crowd, for example, that's Symphony New Brunswick, and there may be four or five hundred people there, but you could count on one hand the number of people under the age of thirty or even forty. But what's happening? Not so much at the Capitol; the shows there, but around the bars, you go there and you think we do have young people in New Brunswick. They're not getting involved in service clubs like they would have thirty, forty years ago. They're not involved in philanthropic causes as much you don't see them you know on the boards of the united way or things but they're here and they need to be entertained and a lot of what is driving their laughter is in the palm of their hands and in some cases they know these comedians because they've seen bits of theirs or whatever mm -hmm. so there's a real appetite for it but it's so refreshing that we're doing something that gets people out of their wherever the heck they are, yeah. to congregate together and come and laugh together out loud. Yeah. As opposed to laughing silently into your little screen, you yeah. know, or it, and sharing it with friends like we do now. Hey, look yeah. at this or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I mean by the magic of it. Because like music, when everybody sings along the songs, when the band plays the favorite tune for the audience and they have that moment, comedians might not have um, all the marketing and positioning that music does. But there's moments when everyone's laughing so hard, they mm -hmm. just can't stop. And that's transcendent. Like something special happens in that room when that comedian or comedian has everyone in that space. Yeah. Yeah, there's a whole interesting thing because there's the personality of the performer and there ends up being a definite personality of a an group audience. of an audience. Yeah, every audience. And like, you know, Robert can tell you from going around, you stick your head in here and it's the same <laughs> comedian who's doing the same routine that he did in Riverview an hour before and now you're across the river or you're in Dieppe or, you know and you're you're witnessing this and it's a completely different reaction because I don't know it, it sometimes take you know I usually I always say like the optimum is about 150 like you know in a theater uh, or in a club you need about 80 the, uh, people like if it's a small venue so people need to be close like if their shoulders are touching it's it's better so we, you jam them in and somebody starts to laugh <laughs> and it's, 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 we are pretty much just like sheep right like yeah. one person starts and then the shoulders moving and oh and then it, it's yeah. infectious yeah. 
And then also the other thing is, and this is a good thing about February, I guess, it can't be too hot. People don't laugh as much when they're really hot. So uh, I always look, and it needs to be dark, which is why we always make sure that we can have the spotlight on the on the performer and there's a certain anonymity so we're all in here like we're all in this little room in the dark together and then one person starts to laugh and if you have three or four really good laughers yeah. they carry just as three or four comedians can carry a whole well, I've been at some shows where there's not those belly laughers in the room and people are having fun but they're laughing behind their hand and because they're like they don't have permission to laugh out loud yeah but once you get two or three of those belly laughers going and everybody's like we're allowed to laugh out loud and yeah. then they just let it go because yeah. it's i feel bad for the comedians sometimes because they think they're up there dying yes but it's like no no they're enjoying the show they just don't know they're allowed to laugh like yep. so you got to get that out and once it starts it just rolls in waves right like it, it is a weird thing because you know why is it that humor is such an important tool Thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.